Hi, I'm Dan Mambiella, the writer artist of Under God and Good Agent. You can find Under, Under God currently crowdfunding at zoop.gg slash c slash under God. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another edition of Rapid Fire. It is a very simple concept, 9 to 15 minutes long, 11 questions thereabouts. And we are joined today by a very talented creator. So who do we have on the show today? We're joined today by a very talented comic writer and creator of two comics that I know of, and I'm sure he's created many more that I'll let him talk about as well, too, in our brief interview. We're joined today by Dan Mabilia. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Kurt. Doing very well. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking, tell us who you are and what you are all about. So I am Dan Mambiella. I am the writer artist of Under God, which is currently crowdfunding on zoop.gg. Uh, it runs till June 10th. Right now it's funded. So it is, I guess, in pre-order mode. So you'll def- you know, it, the book is definitely coming out. And we're working on our one and only stretch goal of uh, adding bonus material and a premium binding to the book. It's a just a self-contained graphic novel. Okay. Everything you need for the story is within that cover. Of course, if everyone loves it, the world keeps spinning after that story ends, but it's, it's just a self-contained graphic novel. So what is your creative kryptonite? So my creative kryptonite has to be time. There's like a sweet spot or like, or like a zone that I think all creatives get into. It takes me at least a little bit of amount of time to, to dive down into it. And if I have something pending, like I know a, a call is going to happen or some event or there's something that's going to be going to be coming up soon. Sometimes I'll feel like it's, well, it's not worth to submerge all the way down there to then just have to have to come right back up. So, so time would definitely be my, my creative kryptonite. Usually people ask, what is the wisest piece of advice or, or what's the most bullshit piece of advice that you usually get in your career? But what is the second wisest piece of advice that have you re- you've received in your career that has stuck with you in your career? <laughs> Very interesting phrasing of the question. Second, the wisest piece of advice. I think it's got, it has to be some of the art tips that I received doing uh, portfolio reviews. So I'm just going to go with one of those. And one that I, I think of about a lot is, so hopefully this will be helpful, especially to, to new uh, artists. When you're doing an establishing shot, it seems intuitive to separate all your figures so that you have each figure that's being presented and each item that's being presented separate, very clear to see. But what that does is creates a flat image. And if you slightly cover each item and each figure with each other, you immediately create depth, which is exactly what you always want to be creating in your in your panel. It's, it's something to always think about when you're structuring a panel is you want to show everything, but if you actually hide things a little bit, it, it helps your panel structure a lot. How do you think the birth of creativity was formed? The birth of creativity is something innate in humankind, I I believe. It's something that that all people experience, uh, whether you consider yourself a creative or not. Uh, uh, Creativity is is just something that whether you're solving uh, an equation or whether you're changing a tire or whether you're painting a masterpiece. Creativity is just an innate human trait, I believe. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? So I I believe it was in my third grade Spanish class. I wrote a poem that impressed my teacher and impressed my family. And, you know, I know that they also were probably very easily impressed uh, because I was a student and I was their child. But uh, my teacher actually had it go to the county fair with selection of, of other things from the school and it won a ribbon. And, and I remember standing there at the fair and my all my family just wowing over this very simple poem. And But I remember thinking, this is a thing, huh? This is there. You really can affect people by just making stuff up. And, and fun fact, the, the poem was poem was titled The Light, but it was in essence, it wasn't plagiarism, but it was in essence me <laughs> paraphrasing Obi-Wan's explanation of the force to Luke from A New Hope. So 
that was my that was my poem. Nice. And people loved it. <laughs> what did you first create that made you realize, yes, I could do this as a career? So I actually wrote uh, a fair amount of indie comics in the '90s. Uh, uh, for some very small indie publishers. Uh, it wasn't the kind of work that I was interested in doing. I, I kept trying to elevate the the material, but it was the certain genre of, of 90s comic. Uh, if you're an old, you can probably imagine exactly the, the kind of comic I'm, I'm talking about. It was a paying gig and it was, it paid again and again and again and again. So it was, that was very nice. And actually one of those things that I parlayed that into was somehow online, <laughs> probably at AOL, met the person who at that time had the the rights to Thunder Agents, uh, Wallywood's Thunder Agents. And I, I wrote a few treatments. They never got published, but I wrote a few treatments and got paid for them too. So I, <laughs> I've worked on Thunder Agents, if that counts. So receiving that paycheck really is a, is a validating uh, experience. You don't, you, you don't need it to create your comic. You don't need any editor to validate you or tell you that it's okay. You, you can still create your comic, but boy, it's a hell of a drug when, when you get that, <laughs> that validation. What are three things that you've accomplished that you are proud of? And what are three future things that you are working on that you're looking forward to accomplishing? Three things that I've uh, accomplished that I am proud of. Uh, I am very proud of my, my personal life. Uh, my, I have a loving wife who puts up with all of my BS about making comics. I have two wonderful kids. I have acquaintances and friends from even elementary and high school still. Uh, I'm very, very proud of those accomplishments. Very proud of Good Agent, which is available on uh, Amazon Kindle, the app formerly known as Comixology. Uh, I'm very proud of of the growth and and where that is now as a story. Uh, it's up to issue seven, and I'm very proud of the work that I've done in in Under God. Under God really represents the the very best work that I'm capable of producing. So I'm very proud of it. I'm very eager for for people to see it. I have more than three stories that I I want to <laughs> to tell, and I look forward to accomplishing those three stories. Uh, a return to a good agent. I'm uh, restructuring of good agent. Uh, is one of them. And I have another story that has to do with mortality that I'm really very much looking, looking forward to doing. It has to do with what we all have to do in life. It's the worst part of the, of the life cycle is, you know, having to say goodbye. So uh, I'm looking forward to jumping into that some, hopefully sooner than later. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who is that for you? Undoubtedly, it has to be my mom, uh, Marilyn Membiela, who was a successful artist. She supported uh, me and my brother out of her little studio. And the primary thing that she did, which is a very niche Catholic service, is statuary reparation. When you have a lot of iconography, you can count on breaking a lot of iconography. You have to know someone to, to help you put St. Joseph's little hand back on or repaint, uh, repaint something. And my mom was, my mom was that person. She worked in, in her studio. You know, people would just bring, bring her all their stuff. And she would do more than that, but that was the primary thing. I mean, she would even cast pieces. She'd make little molds and cast pieces that were missing from the statues. I mean, it, it was, a, it, it was a whole big deal. It, it was, it was done in a small scale, but what she accomplished were, were was, was pretty amazing. And you got to learn like, Basically, you, you basically got to learn early on about figures and about depth and about size and, and definitely and all that as well. Going yeah. in and playing in her studio when she wasn't there was always a treat, you know, and, and there'd be all kinds of things. And I remember, I mean, and then I'd get in trouble because I'd be using up a <laughs> bunch of supplies, but, you know, I would make like uh, wire spool models and then wrap them in tape. And, you know, she just always had like Dremels, uh, but like a, a really hardcore Dremel, not like the kind of Dremel that you'd buy at Target now, like, you know, lots of cool stuff. So as a kid going in there, it was really literally, you know, being in, uh, you know, Wonka's factory. So but for art. From a professional standpoint, you've created multiple comics. You are going to continue to create comics in, in the future as well, too. And professionally, you are, well, you are successful in regards to your crowdfunding campaign because you're now looking towards your stretch goals. So you are professionally successful in that regard. Sounds good. I'm going to play that part. I'm going to play that part back. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll leave it in there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you consider yourself personally successful? Yes, yes. Uh, so I, I <laughs> the, the the I got some some sneak questions in there. So I, I jumped ahead a little bit. So I apologize for that. I uh, I do consider myself, frankly, if if the professional side is making comics, uh, as much as I adore making comics, I do consider myself more uh, successful personally than than I do professionally in that regard. Like, for all the reasons that I, that I just stated, I I do feel like I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I, I am aware of how fortunate I am to to have my wife, my kids, my friends, people that I work with that are acquaintances, generally all nice people. So I, I'm well aware of that, that not everyone has that, unfortunately, and not everyone has that same type of, uh, of a network of, of support. So I'm, 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 I realize and I'm very grateful for it. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? So <laughs> poorly? No, just kidding. <laughs> I, I tend to beat myself up a lot over stupid things that probably no one remembers. My very first instinct with a failure is to to claim responsibility for it. So I'm that kind of person that apologizes for a mistake when it's not their fault. That's my go-to is like, oh, oh yeah, I messed up. Sorry. Like, well, wait, I didn't even do that. And part of that ownership uh, and part of that taking responsibility for the error is an immediate sense of how do we, how do we write this? We, we turn the wrong way. How do, how do I turn the right way with this? An example of that is with a good agent. Good agent was my first time drawing a, a, a full comic uh, aside from just making individual pieces of art and at one point I was so unhappy with unsatisfied with how a panel looked that I thought this is this is it I'm done with this I'm I can't do this there's no way I can I can present this to people in good faith I was talking with my buddies and we all wanted to do some uh, a short comic and I thought, oh, I can do I can do something where it's like astronauts and they're just floating. So I was thinking, like, I'm going to do something easy to make myself feel good. And then I told my buddies, like, no, the only way I can improve my good agent credit score is to do a good agent story. So I did a, an eight page good agent story, almost like a proof of concept. And I was like, I can totally do this. So I went back to to the page that I was unhappy with and reworked. You know, just laid a panel over the drawn drawn panel, another panel, and and redrew it, and and it was satisfactory. It was it was good enough. So then I, I moved on. So done done is better than perfect. It's very it's very factual. The younger generation is looking at your work, and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way. And the fact that you have the younger generation with you, in in your children, is you know, hopefully you're inspiring them to be creative in whatever they want to be creative in, either comics or video or whatever they'd like to do. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Well, I, I hope that I've inspired anyone of any age, but uh, something that is important to the young and the old and anyone creating anything is that you have to get your art out of you. Done is better than perfect. And your art should always be a manifesto. People should be able to see your art and say, oh, this person really felt this way. Uh, this person feels this way about something, or this person's trying to tell me this about something. Whatever you're processing should be in your art and then get it out. Don't keep your art inside you and don't talk your art away. Make your art and get it out. Well, Dan, I do hate to say this, but that ends this particular interview of Two Geeks Talking before I let you go. And by the way, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I, 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 I messed up. I always try to start with a thank you to, <laughs> to the host. So <laughs> you, it was so structured that I messed up, Kurt. So I apologize. Thank you very, very much for creating the show. And thank you so much for, for making space for me on the show. I truly, truly appreciate you being here. Well, so I, thank you. You're very welcome. And I appreciate you having me back on. But before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course... How long is left in the, in your campaign as well, too? I forgot to mention that. Well, uh, so the last day for un, Under God on, on zoop.gg is June 10th. So zoop.gg, you can just hit explore and then go to Under God. I'm also on Twitter. You can hear me if you want to hear me scream about Under God nonstop on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at, at Hal Roth. I hope that everyone checks out Under God and it, and it resonates with them. 
Thank you, Dan, for coming on the show. Greatly appreciate it. you. Can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia, which is a lot more updated than our website because I'm only one person. Give me a break. And of course, as I say every week, I know everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on Two Geeks Talking.